So the, so continue with so to continue with the second video lecture of on environmental engineering is to C452 of uh, Sir Padmapat Singha University Udaipur. Uh, let's have a quick recap of the uh, things which we had in first lecture. This was the thing. This was the contents. I introduced you the subject environmental engineering two in uh, this in the in the previous video lecture. Types of settling we had. We studied a few. Uh, we have introduced the sedimentation tanks also. So this was the water treatment philosophy. Uh, from which this was the intake structure, pump house, then through conveyance, uh, the water was uh, going to treatment plant, then again through conveyance it was going to the uh, this is storage, then from storage, from a pipeline distribution system, the water was distributed to the whole of the township or villages or uh, cities, then uh, then then the water the way the waste water was being generated from the uh, population and it was uh, conveyed through sewage or sewage system to the treatment plant to drains sewage drains through the treatment plant and from treatment plant, plant the effluent effluent was treated and treated it was the it was discharged to the water body so this was the um, introduction uh, let's uh, Let's have a look at the water treatment philosophy. Uh, the available raw water was uh, must be treated and purified before they can be supplied to the public for what, uh, domestic and uh, industrial or any other uses. The extent of the treatment required to be given to the particular water depends upon the characteristics and quality of the raw water present. So this was the raw water. It was then. Uh, it then goes to screening, then primary sedimentation, sedimentation ended with coagulation, then secondary sedimentation, uh, then filtration. After filtration, it goes to disinfection, and after disinfection, it goes to the raw supply. This is the treatment plant uh, siting and hydraulics. Um, then we read about the Indian standards for drinking water. Um, there were different parameters like turbidity, color, testing color, uh, chemical. Uh, there were some chemical parameters such as pH, uh, and there was a range at uh, 7.0 to 8.5, which is standard tolerable, uh, uh, desirable, and tolerable limits. And if no sources and no alternative sources are available, their values are given here in this table. So there are some uh, parameters desirable, tolerable, different limits, and if no alternative sources are available. Typical functions of each uh, uh, each unit operation we, uh, we studied in previous uh, previous video lecture about uh, aeration chemical uses, screening, chemical method, softening, uh, the water, if water is hard you, you have to go for softening, if there is a lot of suspended matter you have to go for sedimentation, if uh, suspended matter, uh, if there is a lot of suspended matter, a part of corridor matter is uh, either bacteria or a suspended matter, so you have to go for coagulation and uh, furthermore remaining coagulation dissolved, dissolved matter and bacteria are removed by the filtration process uh, and then pathogenic bacteria which is causing uh, diseases and organic matter and reducing substances are removed by disinfection. <coughs> Type of treatment required there were different sources and different treatment required. Screening, what was the screening? Screening is the first treatment process uh, used in water and wastewater treatment plants. Screening removes objects such as rags, papers, plastics and metals. Um, then comes settling. Uh, settling is the process by which a particulate settle to the bottom of a liquid and forms sediments. Particles experience a force either due to gravity or due to centrifugal motion tends to move in a uniform manner in the direction exerted by the force. So, what is the purpose of settling? This was also um, given. 
to remove the coarse uh, dispersed phase, to remove coagulated and flocculated impurities. This this is type of setting. This is uh, happening in type setting one. This is happening in type setting two. Uh, type two setting where uh, removal of coagulated and flocculated impurities are done. Then next to remove the, the precipitated impurities after chemical treatment and to settle the sludge biomass after activated sludge process in treatment filters. What is the principle of settling? The suspended solids present in the water having specific gravity greater than, than that of the water. Like say the specific gravity of water is 1, then um, those suspended metals whose uh, gravity, whose specific gravity is more than 1, they are uh, from, they are uh, settled down by gravity as soon as the turbulence is regarded by offering storage. So the turbulence of the water is um, retarded by offering the storage in a tank. Uh, tank basin of the tank basin in which flow is retarded is called settling tank. Theoretical average time for which the water detained in the settling tank is called detention period. So till here we studied in the previous slides. Let's now continue uh, to <coughs> let's now continue to the new topic, which is type of settling. The principle of settling we read, and uh, we have to know that what is the settling tank, what is the settling tank, and what is the detention period. Detention period is the theoretical average time for which the water is detained in the settling tank is called detention period. So I think it is clear that uh, what is uh, say, uh, what is this uh, detention period? It is the time for which the water remains in sedimentation tank. So type two setting, type one, type two, type three, and type four. Type one is the discrete particle setting. Particles set, uh, particles settle individually without any interaction with the neighboring particles. So it is individual particle setting that um, individual particles settling there is the particle have no interaction with the each other particles and they settle their own type 2 is the flocculate particles flocculation causes the particle to increase the mass and uh, settle at the faster rate when we add some uh, coagulant to the uh, sedimentation tank uh, the particles uh, uh, it causes uh, Coagulant causes the flocculation, it, their mass changes, uh, and uh, if their mass changes, um, their weight increases and uh, they settle at a faster rate. Type 3 is the hindered or zone setting, the mass of particles tends to settle as a unit uh, with individual particles remaining in a fixed position with respect to each other. And type 4 is compression settling. Uh, the concentration of particles is so high that sedimentation can only occur through compaction of the structure. This is a, this are the uh, type three and type four are some special type of settling settings. We uh, we are mostly using type one and type two. Let's jump over to the uh, sedimentation. Sedimentation is a physical part of treatment process using gravity to remove suspended solids from water. As we uh, discussed in the settling that what is happening in settling we are having a, um, uh, different zones of we are having different zones in setting a sedimentation tank for which uh, uh, there is one uh, there is one uh, zone which is called settling zone sedimentation is a physical water treatment process uh, using gravity to remove suspended solids from water Solid particles entering by, entering by turbulence of moving water may be removed naturally by sedimentation in the still water of lakes and oceans. Uh, settling basins are ponds constructed for the purpose of removing entrenched solid by sedimentation. It's like if the water, I mean, I, I mean this is a good example uh, which I can give is like um, um, if a dirty water is stored in a glass for some time that is the time is the detention time and uh, the time which is taking uh, and the particles settles down is a good example of uh, settling. 
solid particles entered by turbulence moving water. Uh, by the turbulence of moving water will be removed naturally by sedimentation in the still water of lakes and oceans. So it is, I think it is clear now. Clarifiers are the tanks built with the mechanical means for continuous removal of solid being decomposed by sedimentation. So there are some um, clarifiers which when the sludge get deposits uh, beneath the tank, at the bottom of the tank, it is removed by the um, clarifiers. There are some mechanical uh, equipments which are removing continuously the sludge from the bottom of the tank. <coughs> So, what is settling or what is sedimentation? There is a difference between settling and sedimentation. Uh, many people have uh, have confusion between settling and sedimentation. So, I tried that and to remove that confusion, to solve that confusion. And that um, what is settling or sedimentation? Settling a unit operation in which solids are drawn towards a source of attraction. So, settling is a unit operation. And uh, the particular type of settling that will be discussed in this section is gravitation settling. It should be noted that settling is different from sedimentation. That's what I'm uh, talking time and again that settling and sedimentation are not the same thing. They are different things. All do the different things. What are them? Uh, so the thing to be remembered is this: that sedimentation is a unit operation. So what is sedimentation? This is a condition whereby solids are already at the bottom and in the process of sedimenting. Settling is not yet sedimenting but the particles are falling down the water column in response to gravity. Of course as soon as the solids reach the bottom they begin, they begin sedimenting. It, it, in the physical treatment of water and wastewater settling is normally carried out in settling or sedimentation. So this is a very thin line between setting and sedimentation. So what are the types of sedimentation or settling basins? And let's have a look at the next slide. Sedimentation tank may fun function either intermittently or continuously. The intermittent tanks also called basin type tanks are those which store water for a certain period and keep it in complete rest. In continuous flow type tank, the flow velocity is only reduced and the water is brought to complete rest and is done in the intermittent type. Setting basins may be either long rectangular, so setting basins are either long rectangular or circular in plan. Long narrow rectangular uh, tanks with horizontal flow are generally preferred to the circular tanks with radial or spiral flow in, um, in rectangular flow. Rectangular tanks, the flow is horizontal, whereas in radial or circular tank, the flow is radial or spiral. Let's have a look at long rectangular settling basin. Basin, a long rectangular circle, uh, long rectangular basins are hydraulically more stable in flow control for large volumes is easier this configuration, a typical um, recti long rectangular tank can have length ranging from 2 to 4 times of their width. So, 2 to 4 times of their width is the length. The bottom is slightly sloped to facilitate sludge scraping. A slow moving mechanical sludge scraper continuously pulls the settled material into a sludge hooper where, from where it is pumped out periodically. So, at this point of time, I think I should show you uh, rectangular rectangular settling basin. So this is what uh, long rectangular settling basin is. Uh, let me play it for you. So, this is a long rectangular settling basin or uh, settling tank or sedimentation tank. Uh, 
Here is the basal wall. Here, from here the water enters into this. From here the water is entering into it. And um, to retard the turbulence, to retard the turbulence, the first thing is uh, constructed over here, which is known as the, the basal walls, um, <coughs> which also which retards the turbulence of turbulence of the water and do not disturb the water here which is getting uh, settled uh, which is uh, gas, which is which, which has been given rise okay so we are having uh, we are again having the four zones here there is inlet zone settling zone sludge zone and outlet zone the the water is the water comes out from here these are weirs different different weirs so this is the water, this is the inlet zone, this is the, this zone is known as the settling zone, where water, where the sediment, sediment particles uh, settle and this is the sludge zone, where the different, different sludge uh, particles are getting, um, get accumulated here and this is the mechanical sludge, sludge uh, scraper which is uh, going on scrapping it and it falls the sludge falls here and there is a wall valve here or there is something uh, it has collected in uh, in this in, in this storage so <coughs> From here, the infant will go, uh, will come inside the settling tank, and from here it will, it will go out. So the next one, the next settling basin is uh, circular settling, which is having radial flow. This flow is radial. Radial or radial flow here, which I talked about in uh, in the slides, that circular setting tanks are uh, having some radial flow, and it is difficult to handle it. So this is the uh, this is the uh, blades of scraper here. The sludge, the this is the uh, slopey uh, bottom of the uh, tank because uh, it is very uh, it is essential because the sludge settles down here and it is easy to be in and the slopey surface um, this is the infant, this is the flow water enters from here and goes from here and um, from here the infant, this is the out, outlet of the tank this is the outflow here, this is the infant and uh, this is the weight of surface this is let me play it for you So here water is going and this is the wafer walls um, and it goes like that. This is the sludge start point, blades of, uh, blades of scraper, which is a mechanical device which rotates and um, which facilitates in removal of sludge. Sludge is the raw water minus clean water, the things which are remaining are such a so a long rectangular settling tank can be divided into four zones the zones uh, the, the, those four zones which I was talking about the first is inlet zone the second one is outlet zone and the first is inlet zone the second is settling zone third is outlet zone and fourth is sludge zone inlet zone is reason in which the flow is uniformly distributed over a cross section in such that flow through a settling zone follows the horizontal path. Settling zone occurs uh, in settling zone. The settling, settling occurs under the patient conditions. Uh, outlet zone clarified. If fluid is collected and discharged through the outlet wheel, the sludge zone is uh, for collection of sludge below the settling zone.
circular basins. Circular setting basins have the same functional zones as the long rectangular basin, but the flow resign is different. When the flow enters at the center and is referred to the flow radially towards the perimeter, the horizontal velocity of the water is continuously decreasing as the distance from the center increases. Uh, is the common sense. Uh, thus, the particle path in a circular basin is a parabola, and uh, as opposed to the straight line path in the long rectangular tank. Sludge removal mechanism in the circular tanks are simpler and require less maintenance. Let's now go to the sedimentation type 2 settings and sedimentation added with uh, coagulation. Flocculation is a stimulation by mechanical means to air glow to make destabilized particles into compact fast settleable particles or flocks. Flocculation or gentle agitation results from velocity differences or gradients in the coagulated water which causes fine moving uh, destabilized particles to come into contact and become large readily settleable flocks. So the thing is very simple that when some foreign particle is mixed with this, the destabilized particle uh, come and react with one another and make a settleable mass and they become large and ultimately they settle down. It is common practice to provide an uh, initial rapid or flash mix for the uh, dispersion of the coagulant or other chemicals into the water. Slow mixing is then done during which the growth of flow takes place. So, some, so in starting we are re mixing rapidly or flash mixing is done in start and then after which uh, the when the flow is flow uh, the growth of flow uh, started starts then we are adding uh, the, uh, adding the flocculant slowly so then there is slow mixing is then done rapid or flash mixing is the process by which the coagulant is rapidly and uniformly dispersed to the mass of water this process is usually occurs in a small basin immediately preceding uh, or at the head of the coagulant coagulation basin. Generally the detention period is 30 to 60 seconds and the head loss is 20 to 60 centimeters of water. Um, your collides are destabilized and the nucleus for the flow uh, is formed. Slow mixing brings the contacts between the finely divided destabilized matter formed during the rapid mixing. So after this comes the filtration after sedimentation or uh, sedimentation added with coagulation the next step which comes is filtration the resulting water from the sedimentation will not be pure and may contain some very fine suspended particles and bacteria into it um, to remove or reduce the remaining impurities is still further the water is filtered through the bags of the fine granular material such as sand the process of passing the water through the bags or such granular material is known as the filtration. How filters work? What is the filtration mechanism? So the answer is the sedimentation. Um, the first thing is sedimentation. The mechanism of sedimentation is due to the force of gravity and associate settling velocity the particle of the particles which causes uh, to cross the streamlines in the wind collector. So what I think is that um, uh, in so in filtration there are four types of mechanism filter mechanism. The first is sedimentation, second is interception, third is Brownian movement, and fourth is inertia. So first one is the sedimentation. The sedimentation is the mechanism where force of gravity works and which, uh, which forces water uh, 
uh, which causes uh, the water to cross the streamlines and breach at the collector. Inter then comes the interception. Interception is the is then the interception of particles is common for large particles. If a large enough the particles to follow the streamline that lies very close to the media surface, it will then hit the media ray and be and be captured. So there are different different media of like scent is the media and uh, and the gray uh, the uh, the particles the large particles are then um, uh, the, due to uh, this streamlines they are going and they are um, they are striking to the surface or they are um, they are captured between the uh, two media grains if they are if their size is size is larger so then comes the Brownian diffusion diffusion towards media uh, granules occur for very small particles such as viruses uh, particles move randomly about uh, within the fluid due to the thermal gradients. The me this mechanism is only important for particles with diameter less than 1 micron. Uh, then comes the inertia. Attachment by inertia occurs when the larger particles move fast enough to travel off their streamlines and bump into media grains. What are the different filter materials? Those, um, so first one the sand, sand as a fine or coarse is generally used for filter media. The size of sand is measured expressed by the term called effective size. The effective size that is D10 uh, may be defined as the this is the uh, D10 may be defined as the size of C in mm through which the 10% of the sample of sand by weight will pass. The uniformity in the size or degree of variation in the sizes of the particulars measured and expressed by the term called uniformity coefficient. The uniformity coefficient is that is d60 by d10 uh, may be defined as the ratio of the sieve size in mm through which the 60% of the sample of the sand will pass to the effective size of sand to the effective size of the tank. Effective size is d10 and uniformity coefficient is d60 so this is the um, so this is the uniformity coefficient. Then next the filter material comes that is gravel. Gravel the layers of sand may be supported on gravel uh, which permits the filter water to move freely to the under drains and allows the wash water to move our uniformity upwards. Um, other materials um, are instead of using sand, sometimes anthrafilt uh, is used as filter media. Anthrafilt is made up of anthracite coal, uh, which is type of coal stone that is burns without smoke or flames. It is cheaper and has been able to give high rate of filtration. So sometimes it is used. What are the types of filters? Slow sand filters that consist of fine sand supported by gravel. They capture particles near the surface of the pad and are usually cleaned by scraping away the top layer of sand that contains the particle. Then comes next the rapid sand filter. Uh, it consists of large sand grains uh, supported by gravel and capture particles throughout the pad. They are cleaned by backwashing water through the pad to lift out the particles. Then comes the multimedia filters that consist of two or more layers of supporting different granular materials with uh, different densities. Usually, uh, anthracite coal, sand, gravel provide more versatile collection than a single sand layer because of the, uh, the differences in densities. The layers stay neatly and separated even after that washing. So this is a cross-sectional view of rapid sand filter. Um, so this is cast iron manifold surfaces. Perforated, and there are perforated laterals. This is filter floor. Then comes the gravel uh, of different different sizes. The largest side material uh, media is at the bottom. Then comes the sand. Then uh, comes the wash water trough, troughs. So this is a, a cross section of um, we have cut the filter media from this section, and uh, this is the view of a rapid sand filter. So the references of this slides are Environmental Engineering one, uh, Volume 1, SK Curve, 
uh, Environmental Engineering Volume 2 SKGAR and uh, then the NPTEL website which is developed by IIT.